Go. Samsung pack their phone with so many features. But there's one menu you're not using. It's the advanced features menu. Daniel here from Sam Mobile TV. Today, I'm going to go through every advanced feature on your Samsung phone and show you how to use it. One UI as a software is packed full of so many things. Over time, Samsung decided that all of them needed a place to live. So they created the advanced features menu. So let's go through one by one what's in here so you can understand them a little bit better. You can find advanced features in the settings. It's got its own little heading and there's a lot here. So starting with advanced intelligence, advanced intelligence is Samsung's new AI menu. So if your phone supports AI, you'll find this here. If it doesn't, you won't see it. Now we have comprehensive AI guides here on Sam Mobile already. So I can direct you to where they are and you can go and check them out. But just quickly looking through the list, you'll see a lot of the apps in here that have the AI integrated. And when you click on one, like for example, Samsung Internet, you'll go in here and it takes you into the AI settings of that app. What you can do with it and the settings you can toggle on to make it a better experience. And then moving out of there, and the next one underneath that is Bixby. Where to start with Bixby? It is a thing of great importance in Samsung's ecosystem that is so underutilized by Samsung and users that it's here, but what do we really know about it? Let me know if you want a more comprehensive Bixby breakdown in the future. But for now, in here is where you manage all of the Bixby settings. Your Bixby wake up, your language and voice style, the feedback Bixby gives you, turn on things like personalization so it optimizes the the contextual settings for you that's all in here this is the place for it underneath there is kind of i guess the starting point of where you can really tinker with advanced settings and advanced features it's smart suggestions smart suggestions is incredible this menu here when you toggle it on you go app by app and you toggle on the different ways you can get suggestions inside that app for example samsung keyboard Samsung keyboard has the ability when you copy something, it'll immediately bring it up to the top of the keyboard row. So you can paste it into the next thing you want to do. But it goes as deep as well as things like settings. When you go into the settings menu, you'll get little AI recommendations based on smart suggestions of something you might want to do once you're, in, once you're in there. It's got calendar, it's got messages, it's got reminders. Turn it all on, look at the each individual function and figure out how you want to use it. But absolutely turn this on it's really powerful. Underneath that, and sort of like a silo on its own, is Labs. Samsung put experimental features in here that they want to test and hope that users want to try so they can figure out how to make it better. A lot of stuff has started its life in Labs and then graduated out. The stuff that's in here now is actually quite minimal because Samsung have worked on a lot of things and moved them out of here. But there's three things in there. There's the multi-window for all apps, which at this point, I just turn it on blindly because I never any, have any issues with multi-window, mainly because this is turned on. Next one is dark mode apps. So if you want an app to always use dark mode, even when light mode's on, you can toggle them in here. At the moment, I've only got YouTube that works with that. So maybe as more apps want to join, they can go in there. And then photo ambient wallpaper is the service that Samsung have got where it will sort of change your wallpaper based on the weather. So it'll make it look like it's raining. It'll kind of use intelligence sort of overlay over the top. This is where you turn that on. Next is S Pen. S Pen is only on devices that support the S Pen, obviously. And you can go through and see all of the S Pen features in here. You can control the air actions. So what you actually can do when you zigzag the pen, control the air command. So the little shortcuts that come up when you pull the pen out, control that in here. You can turn on or off air view which is a really great tool. I leave it on. It sort of helps you preview just by hovering the pen over. Sensational. And then all the other stuff regarding S Pen is in here as well. They're just toggles. It's toggles that then enable you to actually use the function. A lot of these functions I've spoken about, things like screen off memo I spoke about in last week's video, where you pull the pen out and you've got a canvas on the lock screen to start writing. That can all be turned on from here. Next is the side button, not the power button, the side button. What you've got the option here is to toggle different things. So whether that be double press or a long press, you can choose what you want it to do. By default, a double press will launch the camera, which has been Samsung's default for the power button 
or the home button on the S7, S6, whichever one it was, to launch the camera. Double press, camera pops up. Best way to do it. However, if you don't want that, you can change it. You can use it to open Samsung Wallet. Sure, uh, we've seen that somewhere before in another brand. Or you can use it to open an app like X, for example, or Twitter, where you double press and it launches into the app. You've got the choice, the settings list is there, up to you. With press and hold, there's two options. By default, at launch of the phone, it's always set to launch Bixby. And the first thing anyone should do is change it to power off your phone, which is what I've done. And there is a guide there to how to power off your phone if you've got Bixby turned on. So you won't need that though, if you use it the right way. Next is multi-window. And the multi-window experience has just gotten better and better. Again, it's something I spoke about last week in the video we did, where you can toggle on the different multi-window ways, the swipe up from the bottom of the screen, the pop-up view from the corner, and then the full screen and split view where it minimizes the home button and also the quick panel at the top to give you the full experience. There are all the toggles and that's where to turn it on and I recommend leaving them all on. Next is motions and gestures. In here is where Samsung put stuff relating to when you move the phone around, gestures you can do with it, all the toggles are in here. A lot of these have either been around for a really long time or sort of been added as time has gone on. Things like lift to wake, double tap to turn on your screen, they're fine. I mean, we've, we've seen them on other stuff before. The stuff I really like is like palm swipe to capture for screenshots. Amazing. Swipe your palm across the screen, takes a screenshot. So convenient and also so clever. Just a really clever way of doing it. But you've also got things like muting when mute phone calls just by bumping your hand over the top. Another really good one because you don't necessarily want to maybe hang up on someone and you just need to quickly mute it. Bang. Mute it. Or... And this is probably the scenario most people will use it in. If you get a phone call and you just place it flat on a desk, also will mute it. So turn that on. Next is one-handed mode. Samsung has the best one-handed mode in the business, hands down. Depending on how you've set it up with the nav buttons, whether you use the gestures or not, will be how this works. So if you've got the gestures turned on, activating one-handed mode will be through a gesture. Simply swipe down from the middle of the screen and it'll bring it into the corner. And you can choose which corner you want it to sit in. So it won't just stunt half the screen. You'll still get the full screen, but it'll just be one-handed use. So you can scroll and use it so much easier with the thumb and where your thumb is naturally positioned. So again, you can swipe it down again to reactivate it back the other way. You've got the nav buttons turned on. It'll use the buttons to activate it instead of gestures. Next is screenshots and screen recordings. There's a lot that you could do in here. So much. It's not just the whole case of take a screenshot and you're done. You've got so many settings that you can tweak here to make the screenshot experience so much better. So the little toggles like show the toolbar after capturing, that's the little toolbar that sort of allows you to edit or crop or anything like that after you've captured it, that's there. But one that I found is quite cool is delete after sharing. So many times we take screenshots where we don't really want to save them, we just want to share them and be done with it. With this, as soon as you share that screenshot after you've taken it, it deletes it. It's gone. So it's not going to be on your storage, clogging up space in your gallery. It's gone forever. I love that. What you can also do is hide the navigation bar and the quick panel bar as well, which I think is really clever because they, again, usually a bit of a distraction. And if you've someone who doesn't clear notifications, opens you up for humiliation as well. Similar to how photos use and save that before the edits are made, this toggle here called save original screenshots allows you to save the original version as well as the edited one so you can always revert back to it. it uses more storage space but can be good in a pinch if you need it. You've got the format of the screenshot PNG or JPEG. PNG is good it's a pretty universal st standard and better quality I've found anyway and then choose where to save them. Simple. Underneath that you have the, the screen recording aspect where you can change the resolution you can add in the option to record your face with a little selfie camera being activated and then the circle size of that face. And if you're someone who likes to showcase sort of what's happening in the screen recording, show taps and touches is here as well. This used to be in developer options and everyone used to just go and turn it on when they were using screen recordings and then turn it off after the screen recording is finished. I'm so glad that this is just part of the screen recording experience. Well done to Samsung for recognizing that. There's another toggle in here called show contacts when sharing content. So when you go to share something, you can see contacts that you potentially frequently send stuff to that pop up in the sharing tab whereas you can remove that if you don't want to share it 
and see people that you share it to all the time, get rid of that, removes the clutter, makes it a little bit more simple, if you like. And the last three here are, are sort of a couple been around for a while, uh, some that's quite new. Video call effects, which is the first one there, is quite new. This is sort of relating to video calls, obviously. So if you're in a video call and you want to create that sort of depth of field effect, or if you want to change the background color or the background itself, you can set them from here for the apps that you want to use them for. Add your own background image in, add the color that you want in, and you can see the apps that it's available for. You can do that from here. The one I love to use is video brightness. So when you're watching videos, Samsung is really clever that they actually, with this turned on, will boost the brightness of the screen to give you a better viewing experience of the video. It brings up the dark areas a lot more and allows you to get a better visual of what you're looking at. I really like it. And you can toggle it on per app in here as well. It's not just it's on and it's on. You can choose the apps that you want it to work with. Love it for YouTube. So recommend turning it on. And the last one is Dual Messenger. Pretty simple premise, kind of not similar, but when I spoke about Secure Folder last week, how you could install duplicate messaging apps inside Secure Folder. Well, if you didn't want to go to that extreme, you can just install a dual a second version of the Messenger app from here. She brings up those apps on the screen as well. So WhatsApp, Facebook, and Messenger are the three that I've got. And you could choose to turn them on from here, should you wish. That is all the advanced features that you can use on your Samsung phone. Some, depending on your phone, might vary. So don't get upset if you can't see it on your phone because you might not have a phone with an S Pen. So you won't see that as an example. Hit subscribe on Sam Mobile TV. Big month in July coming up. You won't want to miss it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.